I would like to begin by taking you back to another time in Westminster's history, one that took place in 1909, a bleak time when the college was on the brink of closing because of its financial condition. President David Kerr had been trying feverishly since 1906 to complete a $300,000 fundraising campaign. Exhausted, he had collapsed the November before the board meeting and had been sent to California for a four-month recuperation. President Kerr's right-hand man in fundraising, the Dean of the Board of Trustees, Reverend William H. Lavelle, had just come on board in October, and after three months of futile attempts to raise money and President Kerr's health collapse, he threw in the towel and quit. Only $100 was raised during Lavelle's brief tenure, bringing the year's total fundraising to $1,400, a fourth of the previous year. Enrollment had dropped from 183 to 167, and the board came into that meeting facing a $25,000 deficit. The board approved taking endowment funds to wipe out the deficit, and everyone thought things were back on track. That is, until school was ready to start in November for the fall term. Just when they thought it couldn't get any worse, Westminster Hall burned down a week before school started. Insurance would only cover half of the original cost of the building, and not anywhere near what it would cost to replace it, nor bring back irreplaceable documents, records, and manuscripts. And the next week, an enrollment count revealed it had dropped from last year's disappointing 167 to a dismal 113. Rushing in, the board met and came up with a new emergency plan. A month later, the driving force behind raising money for the endowment, the president of the Board of Trustees, Thomas S. McFeeters, died. My point is, any one of these circumstances might have been enough to tank many colleges, but to be rocked by setback after setback, such as this board was, and still come back stronger than ever, is what makes Westminster the great college we all know and love. Resilience, my friend, is the Westminster way. We have survived much worse circumstances than today over our 167 years. We've risen from the ashes more than once, and weathering these storms of the past have only made us stronger. And we will weather this storm. We will not only survive, but come back stronger than ever. Our ancestors didn't give up on this small, great college, and neither can we. But just as back in 1909, it will take us working together and planning wisely, guided and inspired by the deep and abiding love we have for this wonderful school. I am committed to making that happen. And I came back to Westminster to you today with a plan to move Westminster forward in the years ahead. When Cindy and I came home to Westminster last November, we found that much had changed since leaving in 2007. Yet some things were the same. First and most importantly, we found that Westminster's principles and all we hold dear have stood the test of time. Westminster faculty, staff, and alumni are forever united around our students to help them find the power in their purpose and equip them to go out in the world and make significant contributions to mankind. The unconditional love we have for our college has endured. But while our brand is strong and uncompromised, we've lost our focus. Crucial elements of our core academics have scattered. The blueprint that we call the Columns Concept, all we do to deliver a transformational experience and teach our students to lead has diminished. We have strayed off mission. Our vision is out of focus, and we lack the sound strategy necessary to right the ship and sustain this college into the next century. Perhaps most disturbing on our return was to find that the pride and morale, which is the heart and soul of the Blue Jay Nation, is weak. Shoulders are slumped. Heads hang low. Fear and pessimism have replaced hope and confidence. Fear and pessimism are becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. To all that I say, no. We are Westminster College, the place where Winston Churchill delivered a speech that changed the fate of mankind, the place where walls come down, the place where, since 1851, generations of leaders, including each of you, have been groomed for destiny larger than yourselves. We do not lead with fear and pessimism. We lead and we teach our students to lead with hope and confidence and integrity. Teaching our students to find their purpose and lead is the Westminster way. 
It's also my way and your way. And now we, you and I together, must begin the work of building a strategic plan to take us forward. A solid plan that is measurable and as sturdy as our six columns, that are the gateway for students who come back to transform their lives and leave here ready to change the world. Where do we begin? We begin with unity. We begin together, gripping hands, firmly embracing our strategic plan. Objective one is to solidify our plan beginning right now, this moment. I seek assurance from each and every one of you that you have not given up on our college and that when you speak of our Westminster College beyond today, it will be with confidence and hope and passion. I will leave with a roadmap to sustain the college. Tomorrow, optimism will be our guide. The plan I present is grounded in focus and clarity, but it is no magic bullet. By making adjustments, we can spread the brunt of the fiscal burden by making moderate gains in increasing revenue, decreasing costs, forging partnerships, improving our budget model, and increasing donor investments in the strategic plan. In other words, we are looking at a series of steady, systematic gains rather than a large, quick fix. Our plan is mission-centric with an eye on those characteristics that make Westminster College different and unique. Our rich history, global thinking, transformative learning, invested alumni, and the integrated experience that arm our students with leadership skills to fulfill their purpose in life. The first five tenets of the plan chart the course to sustainability. We will focus on rebuilding the academic core of the Collins concept as a tool to improve all aspects of the Westminster experience, from recruitment to retention to alumni engagement. The plan will set forth sound and measurable models to increase enrollments, retain students, improve facilities, engage alumni, and enhance our reputation. The plan will provide a sustainable financial model to ensure that we live within our means with clear, targeted objectives and accountability from all departments and staff. The plan will integrate the principles of Winston Churchill into all that we do that, so that his spirit lives on in a world at the time when the Churchill brand of leadership is desperately needed. The sixth tenet of the plan, and one that is my overarching yardstick, is to rebuild morale, instill confidence and hope in the Blue Jay Nation and build an optimal institutional climate where students seek Westminster College out because it is a place where they are confident that they will leave with more than an education. They will leave with purpose, inspiration, and skills to go forth and lead. We are not talking about miracles. No, we're talking about common sense and focused, accountable goals that will save the college. I'm asking you to invest in this strategic plan, in this college, in the spirit of what Westminster means to you and how this college fueled your purpose and did so in your own unique way. The treasured memories, the cherished friendships, the rich traditions, and the extraordinary learning experience. I'm asking you to help keep the flame alive for another century so that in the year 2118, when the world is unrecognizable from what we know today, Westminster's next century of leaders will be moving forward with hope and confidence and integrity, that the leaders we groom here in middle America to serve in a new century will have a lasting impact on mankind. Just as in 1909, our task is not easy, but our love of Westminster is just as strong and our thoughts as resolute. That is why I returned. That is why this is the only college or university I would have left my previous position to lead. Like you, my heart is and always has been here and together. I am confident we will tackle the challenges that lie ahead. 72 years ago, the entire world turned its eyes and ears to Westminster for an historic speech that changed the course of human history. The words of Churchill's Sinews of Peace speech ring just as true today as they did on that fateful March day three quarters of a century ago. Let them become our battle cry. He said, if our moral and material focus and convictions are joined with your own and fraternal association, the high roads of the future will be clear, not only for us, but for all, not only for our time, but for a century to come. I ask you to join me on the high road of Westminster's future. Together, we will lead her into the century to come.